oh hello okay this is my first uh broadcast so it'll get better i i have actually ordered a tripod so um i'm going to have a look at um this scene here sorry about this for those of you uh, with motion sickness at one scene five the first meeting between olivia and viola so I thought the first thing to do would be to read through it and then watch it and then to set the agenda and that would be the end of the first video and then to go through it in a lot more nitpicky way. So after I've read it and watched it, I'm going to be, I don't know why they're in triangles, don't ask me, that I'm doing these triangles, here it is. I said it would get better. So the triangle, this one is um, what is this bit? So it's like, it's the bit where, and I'm also thinking about it, what's, what has prepared us and in the, what's prepared us to get here and what's it preparing us for. I want to think what characters and plots are being developed, that sort of area. My next triangle, here it is. This is, I wonder, I think they probably should overlap because I might well have said some of these things in there. But I want my comedy agenda. There's lots of those love triangles, verbal sparring, wit and word play. Um, lots, I know I said two, but there, you know there are lots. We've got that list and there's more. And then... This triangle, this is the, oops, dramatic methods that I want to write about. And that this forms a kind of checklist. This one, with maybe a bit of this thrown in, is going to be my introduction. This is just me thinking, what do I want to write about? So there we go. I hope that's all clear. It's the bit where what's prepared us, what's it preparing us for? Characters, plots, oh, ideas. <laughs> That's the AA star bit. Sorry about forgetting that. Comedy and dramatic methods, and, and that'll be the plan. So obviously it's going to take me ages, but it'll be very quick for you on the day because you'll know the play so well, you know exactly which bit it is, and you'll be able to think about it very quickly. So um, let's read it. It, you can see it starts, if I put on my, oh, oh, can you see it? You can. The, the tripod will cure everything. This is where it starts. Um, so I thought, like I do in class, I would just read you the modern English. But I haven't got anyone to read it with me. It's a bit embarrassing, isn't it? It's just me doing all the voices. Oh, well. So, um, Olivia is taking an interest in... Who is this person? So I'm up here. This is slightly before your extract starts, which is here. So, Olivia, but what's he like? Well, he's very rude. He insists he'll speak with you whether you want him to or not. What's he look like? How old is he? Not old enough to be a man, but not young enough to be a boy. He's like a bud before it becomes a pea pod, or like a little green apple, sorry, a little green apple before it gets big and ripe. He's somewhere between boy and man. He's very handsome and speaks well, but he's very young. He looks like he just recently stopped breastfeeding. Uh, show him in, call my maid. So the maid is called Maria, our lady wants you. Give me my veil, come, so, come put it over my face. Olivia puts on her veil. We're going to hear Orsino's pleas again. So, entrance of Viola. Which one of you is the lady of the house? They've all got veils on or she can't tell for some reason. You can speak to me. I represent her. What do you want? What stunning, exquisite and unmatchable beauty. But please, tell me if you're the lady of the house because I've never seen her. I'd hate to waste my speech on the wrong person because it's very well written and I spent a lot of time and energy memorising it. Oh, beautiful ladies, don't treat me badly. I'm very sensitive and even the smallest bit of rudeness hurts my feelings. Well, where do you come from, sir? I'm, I'm sorry, but I memorise what I'm supposed to say 
here today. And that question isn't part of the speech, but the speech I learned. Please, my lady, just confirm that you're the lady of the house so that I can get on with my speech. Are you an actor, a special comedy actor? No, madam, but I swear I'm not the person I'm playing. Are you the lady of the house? I am, unless I somehow stole this role. If you're the lady of the house, then it's true you're stealing your role because what's yours to give away is not yours to keep for yourself. But that's not part of what I'm supposed to say. I'll go on with my speech praising you and then I'll get to the point. I'll get to the point now. I'll let you get away with skipping the praise. That's too bad because I spent a long time memorising it and it's poetic. Well, that means it's more likely to be fake. Please keep it to yourself. I heard you were rude when you were standing outside my gate and that's the only reason I let you in. I was curious, but I don't necessarily want to listen to you. If you're just insane, then get out of here. If you're in your right mind, get to the point. I've got no patience for lunacy at the moment. I don't want to waste my time on ridiculous conversations. Um, so this is Maria coming in. Ready to set sails her? The door's right here. No, this boat's docking here a bit longer, little sailor. My lady, would you mind asking your giant here to back off a bit? Tell me what you want. I have a message to deliver. It must be a message about something horrible since you deliver it so rudely. Tell me what it's about. It's about you. I'm not bringing any declarations of war or demands for cash. I'm coming in peace. But you began so rudely. What do you want? If I seemed rude, it's because of how badly I was treated when I got here. Who I am and what I want are a secret. You're the only one I can share the secret with. It's sacred, just for you. It's not for anyone else to hear. Everyone, please leave us alone a moment. I've got a sacred secret to hear. Now, sir, what's this holy secret you wanted to tell me? Most sweet lady. Oh, sweet. It sounds like a nice and gentle kind of faith. Where's the passage of Holy Scripture that you're basing your sermon on? In Orsino's heart. In his heart, in what chapter and verse of his heart? The table of contents says, or I'm talking in the same way you are, it's the first chapter of his heart. Oh, I've read that. That's not holy, it's heresy. Do you have anything else to say? Madam, please let me see your face. Has your Lord given you any orders to negotiate with my face? I don't think so. You're overstepping your bounds now. But I'll open the curtain and let you see the picture. Look, sir... This is a portrait of me as I am at this particular moment. It's pretty well done, isn't it? And she takes the veil off. So I think this is a really weird video to watch. I have to ask you if it's worth it. But here is the scene in um, Actually Acted Out, which is what you need next. You seem to have a foreknowledge of that too. And therefore comes to speak with you. What's to be said to him, lady? He's fortified against any denial. Tell him he shall not speak with Has you. Has been told so. He says he'll stand at your gate like a sheriff's post and be the supporter to a bench. But I can't find the subtitles. Oh, I found them. What kind of man is he? Why, of mankind. No. <laughs> what? The protection of his son, her brother. I give up. Shortly also died, for whose dear love they say she hath abjured the company and sight of men. Oh, that I served that lady and might not be delivered to the world till I had made mine own occasion mellow what my estate is. That were hard to comfort, because she will admit no kind of suit. You're on your own. The Jukes. There is a fair behaviour in thee, Captain. And I'm in the wrong bit. With the Stop. Doth oft close in pollution, yet of thee I will believe thou hast a mind that suits with this. I apologise. Tongue, thy face, thy limbs, actions, in voices well divulged, free, item two, grey eyes, yep. with lids, dialogue. Will you hoist sail, sir? Here lies your way. Oh, good, Connie. <laughs> <laughs> the great day, Connie. We'll, we'll once more hear with you. What's to be said to him, lady? He's 45. This was the bit. I am sorry. Tell him he shall not speak with Has you. Has been told so. He says he'll stand at your gate like a sheriff's post and be the supporter to a bench, but he'll speak with you. What kind of man is he? Why, 
Of mankind, dear. No. What, what manner of man? Very ill manner. He'll speak with you, will you or no? Of what personage and years is he? Ah, not yet old enough for a man, nor young enough for a boy, as a squash is before it is a peas cod, or a, a codling when it is almost an apple. It is with him in standing water between boy and man. He's um, very well favoured. Uh, he speaks rather shrewishly. One would think his mother's milk was scarce out of him. Let him approach. Call in my gentlewoman. Um, gentlewoman? Uh, my lady call. Give me my veil. Come throw it on my face. <laughs> we'll, we'll once more hear Orsino's embassy. The Honourable Lady of the House, which is she? Shh. Speak to me. I shall answer for her. Your will. Most radiant, exquisite, and unmatchable beauty. <laughs> I pray you tell me if this be the lady of the house, for I never saw her. I would be loath to cast away my speech, for besides that it is excellently well penned, I have taken great pains to con it. <laughs> great pains to con it. <laughs> Your beauties, let me sustain no scorn. I am very comfortable, even to the least sinister usage. Whence came you, sir? I can say little more than I have studied, and that question's out of my path. Good gentle one, give me modest assurance if you be the lady of the house that I may proceed in my speech. Are you a comedian? <laughs> no, my profound heart, and yet, by the very fangs of malice, I swear I am not that I play. Are you the lady of the house? If I do not usurp myself, I am. Most certain, if you are she, you do usurp yourself, for what is yours to bestow is not yours to reserve. But this is from my commission. I, I will on with my speech in your praise, and then show you the heart of my message. Come to what is important in it, I forgive you the praise. Alas, I took great pains to study it, and it is poetical. Tis the more like to be famed, I pray you keep it in. I heard you were saucy at my gates, and allowed your approach rather to wonder at you than to hear you. If you be not mad, be gone. If you have reason, be brief. Tis not that time of moon with me to make one in so skipping a dialogue. Will you hoist tail, sir? Here lies your way. Oh, good swabber, I am to hull here a little longer. Some mollification for your giant, sweet lady. Tell me your mind, I'm a messenger. Well, sure, you have some hideous matter to deliver when the courtesy of it is so fearful. Speak your office. It alone concerns your ear. I, I bring no overture of war, no taxation of homage. I hold the olive in my hand. My words are as full of peace as matter. Yet you began rudely. What are you? What would you? The rudeness that hath appeared in me have I learnt from my entertainment. What I am and what I would are as secret as maidenhead. To your ears, divinity. To any others, profanation. Give us the place alone. We will hear this divinity. Now, sir, what is your text? Most. Sweet lady, a comfortable doctrine, and much may be said of it. Where lies your text? In Orsino's bosom. In his bosom. In what chapter of his bosom? To answer by the method, in the first of his heart. Oh, I've read it. It's heresy. Have you no more to say? Good madam, let me see your face. 
Have you any commission from your lord to negotiate with my fate? You are now out of your tax. But we will draw the curtain and show you the picture. Well, look you, sir, such a one I was, this present. It's not well done. Excellent.